Hey everybody, Patton here. Welcome to the channel. I decided to update all my tutorials on SNES Classic Hacking and NES Classic Hacking since my original tutorial started back in October 2017 for everybody who may have recently gotten a new system or who want to update from their old system. This is going to be the video series for you. In this video, I'm going to focus on just hacking the SNES or NES Classic and adding more SNES games or NES games. I'm going to show you how to do every step and I'm going to have any links in my description that you will need to get that done. This is going to be the program that will allow you to hack and change everything with your classic system. Whether it's adding games, adding folders, adding new system cores so you can play different kinds of games like Genesis or Game Boy or TurboGrafx-16. This is the program you need to get all that done. Special thanks to Mad Monkey who kind of pioneered this whole thing and developed the original HackChi program. Team Shinkansen who developed this HackChi CE program and of course everybody over at the Hackchi Resources team who kind of do these updates to make everything super easy for everybody like adding a mod store and developing a website where you can get all your cores that you need. I also want to mention that it is virtually impossible to brick your classic system using a soft mod. There have been no reported cases of anybody bricking their system doing any of these things that I'm going to show you. Okay so the first step to hacking your classic system is to install the latest version of Hackchi CE. It is version 1.2.5. I will have a link in the description for you. Once you have that installed to your PC, make sure that your classic system is turned off. First step is to go to kernel. Click the install and repair button right here. It'll ask if you want to flash the custom kernel. We're going to click yes. Now you have to follow these steps to put your classic system into what is called FEL mode. You do that by holding down the reset button while pushing the power button. You're going to connect your classic system to the PC with the power cable that was provided to you. All you have to do is take off the end of it that connects to a wall outlet and you'll see a USB slot. You put that USB slot into a USB port into your PC. Once you have connected your classic system to your PC, we're going to hold the reset button down while pushing power on our system. Now if this is your first time hacking your system, what you want to do is click that install driver button, but you have to be in FEL mode first. So you have to do the whole reset while pushing power button. Then hit that button to install the driver. You'll see a little pop-up come up that says the NES Classic has been found. It does this for both the SNES Classic and the NES, so you'll get the same pop-up. So once that's done, it'll do what you just saw here. A little bar will appear or start to fill up saying that it's flashing a custom kernel. And that's it. We have our done message saying that our system is hacked and you can add more games. With those couple button presses, your classic system is now hacked. You can tell if everything's working okay by this green light in the bottom corner right here. Depending on which system you have hooked up, Right here, the current games collection, this should say Super Nintendo USA or the various different regions. But this will work for any version of the NES or Super Nintendo Classic. Do not go over more than about 40 games on your system before you have to use folders. By adding folders, you can add more than 40 games. But if you are going to just stick to what you have on the main screen, you cannot go over 40. That's just a limitation of the SNES Classic hardware. So to add more games, you're going to click the Add More Games button right here at the bottom. Then you're going to navigate to whatever folder you keep your ROMs in. I can't advise you on where to find your ROMs. I can't tell you any ROM sites or anything like that. That's against the YouTube Terms of Service. You'll have to find those on your own. So here we are. We're just going to add a couple games. 3D World Runner and 8 Eyes. I'm going to click the Open button, and they'll be added to the top of your list. So as of right now, this is what the game's going to look like. It changed this. You're going to click this Google button right here. A little pop-up comes up, and now you can select your box art. So this one looks nice. Let's go to eight eyes. We'll Google a box art for that as well. There we go. We'll do the same thing for our SNES Classic. We'll add ActRaiser, and how about the Adams Family? We'll open those up Get our box art. There we go, and Adam's family, one more. You can see on the bottom here how much space you have available and how much space you are using if you were to add these games. It's recommended that you leave about 30 megabytes on your system at all times for saves and box art and things like that. So try and keep it about 200 megabytes. With Nintendo games, you don't really have to worry about compatibility too much. I haven't heard many stories about NES games not working on the NES Classic. For the Super Nintendo, however, there are some games that are not compatible with just the native emulator that the SNES Classic uses, which is called Canoe. For these games, you can either patch the ROM using the SFROM tool 
provided here in HackG, or you can use an outside emulator. If you want to use the Canoe emulator, you go to the Settings tab, SFROM Tool, Enable, and then you have this pop-up here. This will tell you to go to Dark Akuma's website to download the files you need to get this tool to run. But once you hit the Yes button, his web page will open up. You just go to Download, and you're going to click the button here for Windows, and that will download the tool to your PC. Once you have the tool downloaded to your PC, you're going to open up your HackG folder. You're going to go into this SFROM Tool folder. You're going to put your zip file right here. You're going to right click it and unzip it. Well, the folder should look like this when you're done. So now if we go back to settings, SFROM tool and enable, we don't get that pop up anymore. That means that we installed the tool correctly. The other method of playing SNES games on your system without the Canoe emulator is to use what's called a core or an H mod. To get these H mods, it has been made very easy. You go to the modules tab and then HackChi mod store. The first thing you want to do is go to the RetroArch tab. You're going to download the latest version of RetroArch Neo. We have 1.7.3a. You click this download module button and it'll download to your HackG folder. Once that's downloaded, go to the RetroArch Cores tab. You're going to look for the SNES 9X Core, which we found right here. Once again, download module. Once you have both of those modules downloaded, you're going to X out of that box. Go back to your modules tab install extra modules. And you'll see here the two cores that we just downloaded RetroArch Neo and SNES 9X. You're going to put a check mark next to both of those cores. You're going to click this OK button. After this bar fills up, both of those cores are going to be installed to your system and they'll be ready to go. So now those modules are installed. To have the games load from RetroArch and not from the native Canoe emulator, you have to change the command line right here. So what we're going to do is change the command line here for Adam's family to run with RetroArch. All we do is take out that Clover Canoe portion and rename it to SNES9X. Something else I want to show you real quick is a controller hack which will allow you to reset your SNES Classic back to the main menu without hitting the reset button on the console itself. It's very handy. To do that, you go to your settings tab up here. Go to controller hacks. You're going to enable the use button combination to reset. And then if you go to the option right below it, you can select what button combination you want. It is defaulted to down and select. So all you do on your controller is hold the down button and select button, and that will enable you to go back to the menu without getting up and restarting your system physically. The very last step you have to do is hit this synchronize button right here. And here's that bar again. It's really quick to install these games to your system. Now what that has done is transferred all the games that we just added, the ActRaiser and Adams Family, from our PC to our SNES Classic. Same thing works with the NES Classic. It'll transfer the games from the PC to that console. So let's go over to the SNES Classic real quick and see how these games look. Here we are with our SNES Classic with the newly added ActRaiser and Adams Family. So ActRaiser we had loading with the Clover emulator. And actually ActRaiser obviously is not one of the included games, but also it was one of those troublesome games that you have to use the SFROM tool to get to run. So as you can see, it is running great. Um, we hit start, we can go into it and looks good, sounds good. We got the borders, perfect. And holding down a select takes us back to the menu. So let's check out the Adams Family, which is running through RetroArch. You get a different loading screen. Now if we hit start and select, this takes us to the RetroArch menu. So that is a way that you can tell if your game is being ran through the Canoe emulator or through the RetroArch emulator. And you can play SNES and NES games on either version of the classic system. They work for both. So that's gonna be it for this tutorial. I hope it was very helpful. Make sure you keep coming back to the channel. I'm gonna show you how to do a lot of really cool things like adding Game Boy games, Turbo Graphics, arcade games, different ports of Doom, Outrun, things like that. A bunch of different things you may have never thought you can do with your classic system. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful for you and I'll see you next time. Hey guys, if you want to contact me outside of YouTube, feel free to use any of these social media platforms. Also, while you're here, why don't you check out some of the other videos that I put out, and if you feel like it, subscribe to the channel.